The goal of the Cavaliers, the Lakers are sticking to the plan. Buyout season and six games of NBA action. That's what we got on the schedule for today, so let go. I'm excited to see this new Cavs team play. The more and more I think about it, the more excited I get. I know yesterday I said that I don't consider this team to be a championship contender anymore, and I still still don't see them wing at all just because I don't see them being the Golden State Warriors or whoever comes out of the Western Conference. Let me just keep it 100% real. But regardless of that, they should at least be very fun to watch. This is gonna be like the first time we've ever seen LeBron on a team with this many young players. We no longer have to watch Jay Crowder and Iman Shumpert do absolutely nothing. Instead, we get to see Jordan Clarkson, Larry Nance Jr., and Rodney Hood try and make bigger names for themselves playing alongside LeBron James. And who knows, maybe one of them blossoms into a star. Maybe Rodney Hood doesn't become the real Rodney Hood until he gets traded to Cleveland. Kind of like how Victor Oladipo didn't become Victor Oladipo until he got traded to the Pacers. Anything is possible. And overall, this is just a huge breath of fresh air for the Cleveland Cavaliers. It gives them a chance to take what was an extremely painful season to watch. Like for real, this team was essentially on life support. So they take that and turn it into something positive. They turn all those guys into a bunch of young players. And honestly, the fact they were able to get what they did with what they had it's it's actually really impressive the only guy they gave up that was doing anything was Dwayne Wade and he wasn't even in a deal that landed them a player so it is extremely impressive what they were able to do you did good Cleveland as for the mindset of this team now what is that that's the only question that we had about this new team what do they expect out of themselves well according to Jordan Clarkson the plans never change for the Cleveland Cavaliers as he says they still plan to try and compete for an NBA championship yeah that's really Really exciting just really change our mindset and everything knowing that we're coming in there trying to compete for a title I guess you do have to have this mindset when you're gonna be playing alongside LeBron James because you know that's LeBron's goal each and every year he's in the NBA and I'm sure it is a big change of mindset for Jordan Clarkson coming from a team that wasn't going to make the playoffs to a team that's expected to make a deep playoff run and this whole trade deadline in and of itself for the Cleveland Cavaliers was a huge W now though we have to talk about the other team that was involved in the biggest trade of the NBA trade deadline the Los Angeles Lakers. And real quick, before I get into the Lakers, I do have to say something here about Isaiah Thomas. I went in on him in yesterday's video, and I might have taken it a little too far. I feel kind of bad about being so hard on Isaiah Thomas. So I'm sorry, but I really do hope that he can get back to the form he was on on the Boston Celtics, where he can get back to that near 30 point per game score. If he does that, that's only better for the league. It'll make the league much more entertaining to watch. I still do think he needs to check his ego just a little bit though, but IT. I hope that in LA, you can at least make yourself look better than you did in Cleveland so other teams will sign you. You can get back to how you were because I'd hate to see you not get a chance or this be the way you fall out of the league after such a great season. It was like I was saying, the Lakers were also a part of the biggest trade that went down yesterday. And we all know why they did that trade. It wasn't because they really wanted Isaiah Thomas or Channing Frye or even the draft pick that they got for Cleveland. They just wanted to shed the salaries of Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. So they'll be able to a couple of players that they actually want on their team in the future. And Magic Johnson once again confirmed this yesterday, as when he was asked if he was still confident that the Lakers will be able to bring in big name free agents in the summer of 2018 or 2019, he said this, I wouldn't have made the move if I wasn't confident. Still the same confidence. We have got to take that next step. I like our core. I love the way Julius Randle is playing. This is the best I've ever seen him play. But again, we are still on the outside looking in. No matter how good we've been playing, we are not in the playoffs. We are not one of the top eight teams in the West. I want us to be in the playoffs, and the only path to that is to add to the roster that we already have. I don't want us to stay where we are. I don't want us to be outside of the playoffs looking in. We have to take another step, right? So this move allows us to position ourselves to hopefully take that next step. Bring in top tier talent so they can make the playoffs, and that's one step closer to them being a championship contender again. This is no new strategy for the LA Lakers. It's just in the past, it hasn't worked out so great for them. However, Magic Johnson is now hoping that with all the young guys that they have they'll be able to go to the, some of the top three agents and say look we have Lonzo Ball we have Brandon Ingram we have Kyle Kuzma we have these great young players now we just need you to sign on and show them how to win games you can take them to the playoffs you can help take them to that next level so Magic John's gonna hope a pitch like that will work on someone like Paul George or whoever the other free agents they go after are as for Isaiah Thomas though since he is still part of the equation right now Magic Johnson actually says that he's excited to have him on the team and then with Lonzo out right now that they 
they needed a point guard. We talked to him. He's so excited. He said that his father was born and raised in Inglewood, so he is really excited. And also right now, Zoe is hurt, so we need a point guard. So especially with that type of experience and the fact that he can score the basketball and pass it, we want to get him in here fast. We told him that. We need somebody to come in there and lead our troops. And he also alluded to the fact that no, Isaiah Thomas will not be starting over Lonzo Ball once Ball is healthy. It's not about starting. It's about how many minutes you get. He's going to get a lot of minutes. So it does seem like Isaiah Thomas is going to get his chance to shine for the LA Lakers. So like I said, IT, please use this time to show that you can still get back to the player you were last year. So no more trades will be made until the NBA season is over. But that doesn't mean that teams won't be looking to upgrade the talent on their roster still. It's NBA buyout season. And right off the bat, there are going to be a couple of interesting names on the market. The first one will be Derek Rose. Now he was sent from Utah to Cleveland and part of the Rodney Hood package. And there's no need for him to be on the Utah Jazz. The Jazz have no need for him. So they have already said that they plan on waving Derek Rose. And you can already guess the first team they will be waiting in line, maybe the only team they'll be waiting in line for his services, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Tom Thibodeau is back at it again, looking to add his former players. I have never seen a guy so bent on getting the old squad back together. I'm sure he loved to add Luol Deng and Joakim Noah if their contracts weren't so absolutely terrible. That being said, Derrick Rose could actually provide a spark off the bench for this Wolves team. They don't have the best bench in the NBA. Outside of Jamal Crawford, they can't rely on anyone to come in and actually score for them. So even if Derrick Rose is only able to give them around 10-ish points per game, I'm sure they greatly appreciate that. Speaking of scoring some points though, another player that looks like he's going to be bought out is Joe Johnson. He was traded to the Kings yesterday and of course they have no need for him so he's going to get bought out and at 36 years old he can still he can still get you a bucket if you need him to and it looks like some teams need him to as there are a handful of teams interested in adding Joe Johnson. The Warriors, the Celtics, the Rockets, and the Thunder all of those teams reportedly want Joe Johnson and it will make a lot of sense for Joe Johnson to go to any of those teams so where he ends up I haven't the slightest clue right now. That wraps up all the action from yesterday though. It's question of the day time. And today's question of the day is this. What do you guys expect out of this new Cleveland Cavaliers team? How far do you see them getting? Let me know down in the comment section below, but now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. And yesterday I asked you guys, is Paul George gonna stay with the Thunder or go to the Lakers? And this is what you had to say. I see Paul George re-signing with OKC, especially if they make a deep playoff run. I think that this off season, Paul George will stay with the Thunder because of how the organization is currently being run. He says time and time again that he loves playing with Westbrook and Melo and that he thinks they are serious championship contenders. Personally, career-wise, I think the best move for Paul George would be to stay with the Thunder right now. Why would he want to leave a team that is only one good bench away from being legit championship contenders, maybe even being the favorites to win it all? I don't know why he would leave that for the Lakers right now, so if I was Paul George, here's what I would do. I would sign a short contract with the Thunder, a couple of years. See what they can do if they can get any closer to winning the championship. If not, then you say, you know what, it's been cool, but I'm going to LA. But if they do, then hey, you got yourself a ring. Don't forget to leave your answer for today's question of the day down in the comments section below. But now we have to take a real quick look at the games from last night. Markeith Morris, you done messed up. Towards the end of a close game, the last thing you want to do is follow a jump shooter. Look, if you close out, close out carefully. Don't even give the impression that you could have fouled. If you contest, contest carefully. Once again, no impression that there could have been a foul. The last thing you want to do is foul Kyrie Irving with less than 10 seconds in a game for three when you're only up by three so he can tie the score at the line and eventually you can lose in overtime. That's exactly what happened to the Washington Wizards yesterday as Kyrie was fouled from three by Marky Morris. He hit all three free throws and the Celtics won in overtime, 110 to 104. Irving with 28 points, six assists, and five rebounds, while Otto Porter Jr. had 27 points and 11 rebounds for the Wizards. I'm trying to imagine what this game would have looked like if Paul George didn't play. It was already bad enough. I mean, without Westbrook and I guess Melo too, the Thunder got blown out by the Lakers 106 to 81. But I just wonder if the Thunder would have even scored 60 points if Paul George didn't play. They had two starters in Patterson and Houston that didn't even score a single point, but 
you know, congrats to LA though. Four straight wins. Have won eight of their last 10 and 12 of their last 16 games. That's good stuff. Ingram with 19 points and six assists while Paul George dropped 29 for OKC. If the Warriors would have lost this game, the Rockets would have officially had the number one seed in the Western Conference, but they didn't lose. So the Rockets don't have the number one seed in the Western Conference. Golden State defeats Dallas 121 to 103. They pulled away in the second half. Curry with 20 points, eight assists and seven rebounds while Dennis Smith Jr. dropped 22. There have been plenty of games here, which might lead you to think the Raptors bench is actually better than their starting lineup, which is insane. How many teams can say, yeah, our bench wins us games on a consistent basis. Not many, but the Raptors are one of them. As the Toronto bench blew the now Porzingis list Knicks into oblivion, 113 to 88, 64 points off the bench for the Raptors last night. Must be nice. Kemba Walker is an all-star now. Ben Simmons misses out once again. You know, Adam Silver really must not care too much for Simmons for some reason, since he is the one who gets to pick the injury replacements. Walker did continue his scoring tear though. He has been going off as of late. Had another 40 point game yesterday, but it didn't matter as the Blazers were still able to get the 109 to 103 overtime win over the Hornets. Nurkic led the way for Portland with 24 points, 14 rebounds, and four blocks. Magic, the team that traded away their starting point guard for a heavily protected second round pick. That was like the real mind blowing trade of the day because it's not like Elver Payton was a bad player at all. And seeing as to how everyone that gets traded from Orlando gets exponentially better, we can look back on this in the future and be baffled that he was traded for a heavily protected second round pick. Uh, but still, the Magic were able to get the win over the Hawks yesterday. Atlanta must be really missing Luke Babbitt, who they traded back to the Heat. Evan Fournier dropped 22. That wraps up all the action from yesterday, though. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to smack that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more daily NBA news, as well as to join the quest, the mission. That wraps up all the action from yesterday, though. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to smack that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more daily NBA news, as well as to join the quest, the mission the grind to 200k 200,000 subscribers hashtag a milli in a year remember to vote for the player of the day but also remember the only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day and yesterday that player was none other than lebron james and it's 37 points 15 assists and 10 rebounds thank you once again for watching i'll see all of you right back here tomorrow for more daily nba news but until then i am out of here peace